But if you ask him, it's like, hey, uh, if you put a genome side by side next to another genome, and like, what are we supposed to see as far as the genetic entropy? He can't tell you. Yes, we can. Let's pick any Neanderthal from the list. Here's one from the GenBank NC-011137, which was found in Croatia and sequenced in 2009 by mtDNA analysis conducted using the reverse Cambridge reference sequence. This is exactly what you wanted to see and exactly what you're asking for. Here we line up modern day man and Neanderthal side by side. Here you can see the total mutations being 210 in current man. Neanderthal, only 10. This is exactly what we would expect if creation were true. Ancient man had fewer mutations, modern man has more mutations. My view is that in the beginning, somewhere around 4000 BC, there were no human genetic mutations in Adam or Eve nor their children. Only after the fall was there a sudden activation of genetic mutations, which one or some activated mortality. These mutations would affect the entire genome, but more certainly in the mitochondrial genome due to the close connection between mitochondria and lifespan. Now that we know genetics a lot better, we know that genes such as the sirtuins, the LOS1, the APOE, the F4, FOXO genes, all are directly linked to longevity. This genetic superiority of first man allowed extreme longevity. Something about the environment played a huge factor. After the flood, deleterious mutations rose much faster than before. The Bible and many other religious texts around the world are clear pre-flood man lived about 900 years, some of them. In order for this to be true, pre-flood man's physiology had to be superior than ours. Neanderthal had better bone structure, and their bones were thicker and stronger than ours. They had better muscle tone. Neanderthal have up to 50% more asymmetry, better occlusion, stronger teeth, and larger brain cavity. This makes a valid argument saying that Neanderthals were smarter than us because it's been linked that brain size and intelligence are correlated. We have now found evidence that Neanderthal DNA is 99.5% identical with present-day humans, and that Neanderthal DNA appears to fall inside the variation of present-day humans. Neanderthal had less hair on their backs than present-day humans do in theirs. This is due to a genetic marker RS4849721. This marker is shared by Neanderthal and present-day humans. For example, if you have a T at this marker position, you probably have less hair than average. Neanderthals have the T, which means they too probably had far less back hair than the average present-day human. Hmm, so that's much less hairy of an ape man, don't you think? I'll give you some more evidence. Let's look at 16 different Neanderthal DNA sequences we have and combine them all. An analysis done revealed that the 16 combined Neanderthal genomes have a total of only 18 deleterious mutations in the D-loop. A creationist would expect that these 18 mutations would be passed through Noah's three daughter-in-law, the L, M, and N haplogroups, and would be widely distributed in the modern-day population if creationism were true because we believe they are not weeded out through selection, like evolution tells us. Guess what? We find all of them but one, 16369A, who probably died in the flood and never passed it on. Do you see the problem now? Natural selection cannot erase accumulating mutations fast enough for evolution to be possible. And now we know for a fact that regulatory and repetitive DNA sequences accumulate mutations at a rate of 64 to 175, depending on the study. The 2012 science study, the author used three methods to estimate the likelihood that new variants would have a neutral, possibly damaging, or probably damaging effect. Why was there no category for beneficial variants? It's because there are too few, if any, variants that could even fall into such a category. In 2004, Bergman had studied the topic of beneficial mutations, among other things. He did a simple literature search using biological abstracts and medline. He found 453,732 mutation hits, but among these, only 186 mention the word beneficial. That's about 4 in 10,000. When those 186 references were reviewed, almost all the beneficial mutations were only beneficial in a very narrow sense of the word. Each mutation consistently involved loss of overall function changes, such as escape from adaptive conflict. These observable, testable pieces of data prove that mutations will never bring bacteria to humans or fish to fishermen. 
I remind you, the Human Genetic Mutation Database maintains a record of disease-causing genetic mutations in human DNA at a population level. Over three months, more than 6,000 new harmful genetic mutations were registered. That is an annual growth of over 24,000. These are not being weeded out via selection. The human genome is rapidly deteriorating. I do not understand why people don't see this. We study humans far more than we ever do animals when it comes to disease, and there are over 203,885 disease-causing genomic mutations in the human genome at a population level as of 2017. The number is rapidly getting higher. One in five healthy adults carry disease-related genetic mutations. Scientists are in a hurry to develop gene-editing architectures like CRISPR to help combat this huge problem. The human Y chromosome is rapidly losing genetic material as well. The number of SNPs is correlated with loss of genes. For example, Icelanders have now lost 1,171 genes. There are over 20 million SNPs in their genome. So in conclusion, you can see that logic would dictate, since mutations are building up, you can look in the past and see that mutational load in our ancestors was much less than it is today. They had far better genetics because of this as well. Sorry, Drag. Looks like they made a monkey out of you.